Hey everyone, welcome to another game development episode where we're recreating The Legend of Zelda in Game Maker. And today we're going to do this menu right here. And it's deceivingly simple because it looks like we're just sliding down. Um, and that is somewhat true, but by the way that we set up things in Game Maker in the last episode, it's a little bit more difficult to do. If you have not watched the last episode where we did room transitions, that's where we set up all the views. I explained the ports and everything. It's a lot you're going to need that to be able to understand what all we're doing here. I'm going to try to give a brief summary though. So in order for all this to work, um, these are the levels here, and this is the menu item. And we're using two views and two ports to generate the, the entire screen. So view zero um, has a height of 176 by 256, and it renders whatever is in the level here. Uh, and view one here, renders part of the menu that's going on here. And so when we do that little transition where we're saying start and you start to see the whole menu and we do start and it closes the menu and you see the level, what's actually happening is we're growing the view and the port of this from the small 56 um, pixel tall window to the entire window here and shrinking this one. In fact, I can explain it using this little diagram here in PowerPoint. So the total height here, this black box, dark gray box, represents the entire view. And these little dotted lines show the views inside the room and what portion of the room that they're showing. So the blue is that menu I showed you just a minute ago. And the dotted line is only showing the view, the small view of that, that menu. And this dotted line is showing the view of that level. When you press start, what actually happens is the top view grows and moves up. So the Y position moves up while the height of the, the port and the view grow, while the Y position of the level actually stays the same, but the height of it actually starts to shrink. In fact, in the end, what happens is the, the HUD and the menu take up the entire screen. It's 232 pixels tall, and the Y is equal zero. Well, the Y is still the same here, but the height of this is equal to zero so that everything shows. So, and then it all gets reversed. So the code I'm about to show you guys is when I do that, what we're gonna be doing is setting up some targets for the values of the Y for the HUD and the height of the view and the port. The same thing here. We're gonna set the height and view of the port here as targets for each direction that we're moving like this. So let's go take a look at that. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up an old object from one of the first episodes called input, and we need to get the start button. We haven't actually set that up yet, so we're going to do that real quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do keyboard check pressed, and we're going to do VK control. So we hit the control button, and that's all we're doing there. Next, we're going to go to the object game and in the create event. We're going to set up two variables. One is state is equal to in level and menu open is equal to false. So we're going to put a state machine very similar to what we did in the player object for now. In a future episode, I'm going to show you guys a new state machine that we're going to put in here. It'll be a lot better, but I want a whole episode dedicated to it. So let's go to the step event and start setting up our switch statement. So switch state. So whatever state that we're working in, if we're in the level, we'd say case in level. And then bracket bracket. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste this twice and just change these. So in level, we're gonna say menu trans for any transition state that we're in. And then we're gonna say in menu. And let's do a break. Break and break. I like to do that first because I tend to forget them if I don't do that. This right here, this code is from the last episode that actually made the views follow the player and and look and make it look like the room transitions that you normally see in Zelda. We're gonna put that in the end level. The next thing that we're gonna do is while we're in the level, we need to check when the player hits the start button. So we're gonna say if input 
start, then we're going to say state equals menu trans. That way, the next time we go, we can actually deal with the, the transition. Um, we're going to do something similar here. We'll put it back into the menu transition, and we're going to deal with setting the state back to end level in the in the transition when it's actually open. So let's now start adding some code around the menu opening. So a couple things that we're going to need. Well, one is we're going to have a move speed. So I'm going to say move speed is equal to two, and then the HUD height is equal to. Um, 56 the level height is equal to 176 and the total height is equal to HUD height plus level height uh, these are just uh, all the values that we'll need for the rest of the code so now we're going to deal with so if not menu open else. So this first part of the code, what we're going to do is if the menu is not open when we enter the transition state, which means that this is the first time the player hit the button, we're going to set all the target values that I told you about in here. So basically we're in this state right now. When they hit the, the start button, they're eventually going to go to this state. So we're going to set all the values for the height, the Y, um, for the HUD, and the height and uh, for the HUD and the portal for the level. So that's the code that you're about to see. And so here's what we do. We say HUD Y um, target is equal to zero. That's the Y of that is going to go all the way to the top. So then the HUD height target, so target is equal to the total height. So that's for the HUD. Now we need to set the level value. So LVL will say um, Y is equal to total height and the level um, height, I, I, need, I forgot the target, equals to zero. Let me put the target in there. Target. So these are the target values that we're going to put in for this. Um, so the the reason the Y is at the as at the total height is because the total height is 232 pixels, and that's what we want it to eventually be as it's doing the scroll. So that's the values as we're opening the menu, and now we're going to set the values when we're closing it. So the target of of the Y for the HUD now needs to be at level height. It's kind of strange. It, it doesn't make sense. It actually has to do with the fact that um, the target for the view here just happens to be at 176, which is the height of a level. That's that's actually why that ends up being the level of the height. I and mean, if the menu was smaller um, for some reason, that would have been a different number. So the HUD um, target height is actually HUD height, which is 56. The level Y target is equal to um, HUD height. And then the level height target is also equal to level height. So this makes sense. So the level height, once the window is completely open, is the height of the level. So hopefully that all makes sense and pay close attention to the names of each of these. Okay, so now we need some if statements that are dealing with the fact that we, we actually hit um, the end of this. So what we're going to say is if the view h port um, for this, which is for the level, and that's one, is equal to total height, Then we can say menu open equals true. 
and state equals in menu. So we're going to do a similar check down here. So that's once it's all the way open. We're going to do a similar check here. So we're going to check to see if the, the viewport is equal to the HUD height. And if that's the case, we're going to say the menu open is false and we're in level. Okay, so all this code so far has just been set up to set the targets um, and deal with the states. We haven't even set the actual values. And here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna copy all this code in so I don't make any typos and I can just talk about it. So now these are all gonna move our views and our ports and our Ys to the right direction. In the last episode, I did uh, go over move towards. That was a new code. Basically what it is is the code for move towards says, where are you now? That's the first value. So right now we're at this point. Where do you want to be? So this is our targets. And so we'll change this to target. This is the target height. And this is the target height as well. And then let's do target, target. So where are you now? Where do you want to be? And how fast do you want to move there? And that's what all this code does. So we're moving the Y of the HUD up to zero or back down if, it's, if we're closing it. How big is the port on the screen? How big is the height? These are usually the same exact thing. Well, they are the same exact thing. Um, and we're doing the same thing with the level. We're gonna say, where's the Y? Where's the, the height of this and the height of the port? So um, in this case, the only thing is we're not moving towards anything. It's actually just to keep all the proportions right. I'm saying the total height, which is 232, minus whatever this port size is. So just make this the other size that we need. So all this should actually give us the ability to do the menu. So let's test it out. It's a lot of code, so there's potential for a problem, especially as I was changing the names of the variables here. Okay, that was expected from the last episode. Um, we'll fix that eventually. I'm going to press Control. And it worked. Surprise, surprise. No errors in the first try. So... Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go over to another screen. We're going to hit control. Um, now I'm moving my arrows and nothing can happen. I can't move my, my player. Technically, actually, I think it does because I have nothing in there that stops him from moving. Um, we'll fix that at another point. So everything works as expected. So this is how we're going to do the menu. Um, in the future, we're actually going to change out the HUD so that you actually have working code in here. The first thing we'll eventually do is the life um, and assign that to link. Um, so I have a couple of episodes planned. I have some state uh, finite state machines that we're going to do. We're going to start dealing with the, li the life. We're going to start working on um, item pickups and, and so on and so forth. So hopefully you guys followed along. Again, um, I didn't state this at the beginning, but just so you guys know, um, you can download all this code on my Patreon page. It's all free. There's a link below. So go check it out if you're wanting to play with the code or if you're struggling at all with some of the code copying it from this episode. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.